Senators, I attend the Senate in conformity with your notice for the purpose of joining with you for the trial of the President of the United States. I am now prepared to take the oath. Will you place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald John Trump, President of the United States, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and the laws, so help you God. I do. God bless you. Thank you very much. At this time, I will administer the oath to all senators in the chamber in conformance with Article I, Section 3, Clause 6 of the Constitution and the Senate's impeachment rules. Will all senators now stand or remain standing uh, and raise their right hand? Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald John Trump, President of the United States, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws? So help you God. The clerk will call the names in groups of four and senators will present themselves at the desk to sign the oath book. And so it begins. I'm Barry Gordon. And I'm Andre Coleman. And this is News Wrap, live at five. Get it. Okay. The guy looks like his hair got impeached. <laughs> did you see the ball spot on that cat, man? I did. What in the... Come on now. He what can't in the help wide it. world of sports? You know, well, he can help it by leaving the other hair up there. Just shave it. Did you see that? <laughs> Show that. Bring that guy's... No, bro. no. Let's not watch his what? balls. What? what? This his is balls. a solemn occasion, Dre. Solemn for who? For... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're happy. I'm happy. Who's solemn? Uh, well, I'm not happy yet, you know. I'll, I'll be happy if 20 senators change their minds, and I don't think that that's necessarily going to happen. I but, don't think that's uh, what's up. Well, that is what's at stake in the trial, but yeah. I don't think that's what – I think the Republicans are missing the mark, and I think that uh, it's kind of like chess. When you have somebody in checkmate, mm -hmm. two positions on one move, mm -hmm. I think they're in checkmate on two positions, and they don't realize it because I, you know what I think is at play here is the Senate. Oh, you mean the majority in the Senate? The majority of well, the Senate is what is is what the real danger of loss is here. It is, but there's something that happens before that, which is the primary season. Of course, and that's what they're afraid of. Yeah, but you know that's why Martha McSally, right? You know, said what would she call the guy a liberal, liberal hack? hack? Yeah, yeah. But you know, here the Republicans are really behind the eight ball because now with new information being released. If the media suddenly decides uh, to go back and report on the emails that came out uh, right before the attack on Iran, again, that information is there, and you now have a couple of Republicans going, look, we need to talk about – I'm willing to have a conversation about witnesses. Yes. They're not saying I want witnesses, but they're saying we need to have a conversation. To go, we're just not going in that direction, or we're not going to have them. I think most of the American public at this point wants to see witnesses. They want to hear from a lot of people. And I would not be Mitch McConnell and not fight to get those people and expect good things to happen yeah. from that is what I'm saying, I guess. Do you have any thoughts about uh, the House managers? Uh, glad Val Demings was sure. up there. Um, the only non-lawyer. Yeah, who I really think is kind of a rising yep. uh, star in I the agree. party. Yeah. Um, was not surprised by Adam. Well, of course not. But then was surprised by Adam a little bit because I think you and I did talk about Adam had a fumble. Being, being a lightning rod a little bit. Yeah, too. he had a fumble there. But this kind of yeah. takes off the lightning rod thing by having him right. there as an impeachment man right. manager. Um, so other than that, no. But I think Dershowitz is a horrible, horrible move. Do you really? Well, Why? You don't think it's a good political move? No. And I don't think it's a good PR move because part of it's going to be appearance. And you're going to have a guy who looks like he's about to fall over. Um, and a guy who just, I mean, he was involved in the Epstein thing, and there's still even some questions yeah. with him in a sexual assault case that's coming back up now. 
So it's a lightning rod kind of situation uh, for a president who's already a lightning rod. They were talking about it a little bit as I was driving in, and, and the, the thing that they think about Dershowitz, though, is that he may give cover to the Republicans because what he can basically say is you really can't impeach a president for abuse of power. But, right. you know, here's the problem, I think, that I'm having, and, and, um, and no one's answered this question for me. Certainly no Republican senator I'll answer it for you right has now. answered this question. Uh, we know what Donald Trump is like. I mean, and, and even people that are supporting him know what he's like. Mm -hmm. So if he has done something wrong, and a lot of people admit that he's done something wrong, frankly. <laughs> I mean, Kenneth Starr said on television right. that he did something wrong. And even some Republicans off camera tell other That's Democrats. That's right. So what if a train wreck he is. If he's done something wrong and you don't impeach him, A, how do you punish him? And B, how do you deter him? Because impeachment seems to be the only tool that we have it is. to do that. Now, with a normal person, you could do like we did with Clinton. You could talk about censure. And you know what? If we censured Bill Clinton and didn't impeach him, he would have been ashamed. And he would have said, I'm ashamed, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you know, that shouldn't, you know, obviously I did something wrong. Trump isn't going to respond to censure. He's not going to respond to anything other than here's the door. That's the only thing that he's going to respond to. Now, the, the problem, of course, is that if he's not removed and all the betting is that he won't be removed, does he get worse? between now and November because, you know, we have the example that he, and I'm for impeachment, believe me, but I'm mm -hmm. for impeachment not from a political perspective. I'm there because I feel we have to defend so the Constitution. So you're talking about fallout. I am talking about fallout, and, and now clearly I think it's going to hurt him in November. I, r I really do. I believe that. It won't hurt him with his base, but his base isn't big enough to get elected. So... It's going to hurt him. But the question really is, does he get worse? I mean, we're reading things, this new book that's coming out, A Very Stable Genius, where basically he's saying to his military, to his intelligence people, I know better. You're all wrong. I know better. And if I want to start a war, then I'm right. You know, I'm right. We should start a war. So he's... He's not only crazy, but he is so arrogant. And so where is he going to take it if he has no restraints on him? He already doesn't have any restraints on him. Well, he doesn't because all of the people that were restraining him are gone. Well, and the, the, the party, the Congress that's supposed to restrain him, one side's willing to do it. Right. And the other side isn't. So this is a, a weird answer to your question. Okay. He's not going to get any more crazier or any more crazy than he already is. Are you sure? No, his actions may get worse. Okay, okay. But his but mental state get any is right. already there. Right, right. Is the point. Right. However, from a, like you said, this is a move that has to be taken. I do think there is a chance that the party, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, and those mm -hmm. guys, we're going to privately try and reel him in after, after this impeachment because now we have to justify it. We have to justify it. They're going to have to justify the votes. Yeah, they are. And if they can't justify the votes through his actions, then they're in trouble like he is. Mm -hmm. He's going to pay for it in November. I still do believe that. Now, against who, that's, that's somewhere where I don't think we necessarily may sit on the same page. Yeah. Um, and, and, and kind of we do at the same time. But where we are right now, I'm still not sure that this doesn't turn against him, that this doesn't get worse for him. And I'm still not sure. I, I still think to their... Why, do you think more evidence is going to come out? I think, you think I think much more evidence is coming out, and I think the evidence is speeding up as it comes out. I don't think we have... It's like I told you a couple weeks ago. If he made this phone call to one leader... This dude, he made it to 20. Yeah. And 
I don't think they were following this woman for no reason. Well, we don't know. I, I'm, I've got to now play devil's advocate. We don't know that they were following this woman. Well, that we really don't. I, I mean, the Ukraine's going to look. Ukraine's going to look. I don't, I don't play that, devil's but. advocate that way. I play, I play odds, mm -hmm. and the odds say if you're saying she's on the move. Yeah, but Robert Hyde. I don't care who, who the heck is he. But that's the kind of idiot Trump gets that he can control. My point is, somebody was watching her. If we don't go to follow, we can say watch. Okay. I'm not sure she wasn't in, her life wasn't in danger. Let's put it that but way. I don't think any of us are sure of that. And I think there's a chance it could have been. So I think there's stuff coming out in this that we are not even imagining right now that, that it looks like is, becoming, is, is beginning to come up. Yeah. And I think Pompeo is, being, is, is in a really bad position right now because when we get to, okay, why is the State Department investigating this? And now they're going, okay, well, we'll look into it. Yeah. Who knows what else is coming up? Well, it could be, although there was one thing in Pompeo's favor, because apparently he kept blocking the firing of Yovanovitch. Yeah. If, if, if Parnas is telling the truth, and we don't know if he is. We, we really don't know whether he's just telling everyone what they want to hear, you know, and in on some the ways Democratic that, side. Part we just it, don't know. Part but. of it was he clearly was – adding two plus two and coming up with five. Right. I thought, because there were some leaps of logic, and he'd say something here that didn't match up with something there, clearly. Right. But then you have Devin Nunes, right. who's the, if you don't know who Devin Nunes is. You're lucky. He's the <laughs> ranking member. No, he's the, yes, he's the, he's the ranking, ranking member. member now of the Intelligence Committee. In other words, he's number two to Adam on the Republican side. And... Parnas had said that he had conversations with Devin Nunes, and Devin Nunes first said, oh, I don't know him, and I have no right. idea who he is, and I don't know anything. And then he finally said, well, yeah, you know, I guess I do remember right. that he called, and he said, but everyone, a lot of people call my office, and, and yeah. I don't know. And then two seconds later, he said, yeah, I had a conversation. He called my cell phone. Right. His cell, cell phone? phone? Yeah. Okay. So how the heck did he get that number? Right. right. So that immediately kind of corroborates what Parnas is saying, at exactly. least on that. Exactly. And if he calls your cell phone and you're not shocked that he has your cell phone or going off on the person who gave it to him, mm -hmm. then it's cool with him having it. So what does that say? But it's interesting if, if, uh, if Pompeo stood in the way of firing Ivanovich. Well, I don't think Pompeo is necessarily in legal jeopardy. I think he's in a rock and a hard place in that. Yeah. He has information, and he's going to he's going to be called upon to perform his duty. That's a good point. We have a comment. The best way to get back at Trump, his hotel is okay. <laughs> on Fifth Avenue. Just change the address to Obama Boulevard. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Let's that, that, contact de Blasio. Hey, I'm down with that one. Yeah. I'm a, I'm yeah. A, Let's I'll go get down there that put one up on the agenda. Even if they don't change it, let's just put a <laughs> sign up. Oh, I love that. So, yeah. You saw the debate. I saw the debate. You, are, you, are you ready to pivot there? Or you, you want to? I'm. I well, maybe we're going to pivot on Facebook because I, isn't it time for local? Let's go local. Let's go local. This is your local news brief for Friday, January seventeenth, two thousand twenty. Sweet Flower Pasadena LLC has filed a lawsuit against the city. The lawsuit claims that the city's permit process was unfair disputing the chaotic rollout of brand new regulations. Sweet Flower's permit was denied because their company location map wasn't prepared by a licensed surveyor. The regulation for a licensed surveyor had not been a requirement until two days before the city began accepting applications. Sweet Flower's lawsuit contends that cannabis regulations are only in effect after being published on the city's website. And the licensed surveyor requirement wasn't published until eight days after the city began accepting applications. A spokeswoman for the city said the city will defend its position vigorously. Investigators are at the scene of a fire at a Pasadena apartment building. The complex on Madison Avenue caught fire around 1130 last night. Residents that had been displaced after an apartment fire in December still have not been allowed to return to their units or allowed to retrieve their belongings. Trillion Property Management CEO Eric Rivera is quoted in a Pasadena Now article as saying, 
Allowing residents into a contaminated building puts their health at risk and disregards best practices. And further says, Trilliant has maintained consistent communication with each tenant daily. Building resident Tia Strozier alleges that communication with management has been almost non-existent. Strozier said in the same article, I contacted the office by phone on December 30th and left a voicemail. Still, no call back from anyone at the company. After Monday's council meeting, Rivera sent an email out saying he requested emergency clearance from the fire cleanup contractors, although actual cleanup wouldn't begin for weeks. In the email, Rivera states, we will contact each respective tenant when, if items can be recovered and entrance can be granted. There is no need to contact us at this time. This week, the Arroyo Seco Foundation held a mayoral forum on the subject of how green should Pasadena be. Incumbent Mayor Terry Tornick, Council Member Victor Gordo, former City Commissioner Jason Hardin, and Major Williams addressed questions from moderators on climate and environmental sustainability. Tornick, Gordo, and Harding were in agreement that environmental issues would be a priority. Williams felt the subject was a divisive national concern not applicable to local politics. Gordo and Mayor Terry Tornick shared their contrasting points of view, with Tornick defending his decision not to sign on to the Paris Accord's Mayor's Climate Action Pledge. Gordo felt that was a mistake, stating, we need to reclaim our role as a leader and be involved. Hardin was the only candidate on stage to sign a Pasadena Green New Deal petition, which would commit the city to 100% renewable energy by 2030. All right. Um, I, I didn't see the most important news up there. I figured I, we were going to go here. I really didn't. Um, and I kind of expected to have expected Because the most important local news for this show, my friend. Seems like a lot of places, because this has been all over Facebook. Is, uh, a lot of news about this. Yeah. You made a move. I made a move. Talk about it. Well, you know what, Barry? And this isn't the, the entire reason I made this move. Sometimes you have to, I don't mind shaking things up. And you and I have known each other for really? a long time. Yeah, you and I have known each other for a long time. <laughs> okay. So you know that. Yeah. I don't mind shaking things up. I don't mind kicking dust up. Right. So I knew it would be a big deal when it came out that I was leaving the Passion Weekly for Pasadena now. So at 1 o'clock on 12.59 on Wednesday, I was the deputy editor of the Passion Weekly. Mm -hmm. And at 1 o'clock, I became the managing editor of Pasadena now. So in that one second i changed the entire media landscape in pasadena all right so the pasadena weekly had the best reporter in town up until 12 59 mm -hmm. pasadena now got it at one o'clock so pasadena now very soon will become the top media outlet in town i thought it would be six months now i'm going to say three really well, if you look at this, the work we did this week alone in the last two days, if you look at the stories, we've done some amazing, amazing work. That's great. Already. And I haven't even brought in some, fam from some familiar names to people who follow local journalism who are going to be reporting on Pasadena now very, very soon. So you're not going to have to deal with deadlines anymore, are you? No, Pasadena now has set deadlines. Oh, they do? Yeah. But right now, Pasadena now is a daily. It's going to be Online. Online, but yes. it's going to become where we are moving it to is we're going to update several times a day very, very soon. That's going to be the place where you have to go to get local news. Mm -hmm. um, I got some ideas, you know, not covering council from a perspective of this is what's happened last night. Yeah. We could be talking about this is what was just said two minutes ago. Sure, you can. Live play by play. Sure. On some events. Sure. Pasadena Now, when it started, was really great for fires on the mountain, um, road closures, emergency incidents. Local events. Local events. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're going to move that to everything, mm -hmm. is my idea, is where we're going with it. So buckle up. Wow. Buckle up. It sounds exciting. It's, if you, look, where it is now, you ain't seen nothing yet, brother. So did you cover the environmental forum? Yes, Pasadena now did. Mm -hmm. We did. We did. Mm -hmm. And perplexing in some ways, <laughs> yeah. uh, undoubtedly. I think uh, 
I didn't understand Major Williams' points about not really, he thinks it's a divisive national issue that doesn't have local implications. It's a paraphrase. Of course it has local implications. Well, I don't know why you would go to a environmental forum to make that point. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. But even if it is, it, every, he was writing it off, probably. Well, every national issue is a local issue. And, sure. and that doesn't mean that he won't be elected. And that doesn't mean that I'm not saying anything about his candidacy. I'm just saying that that's a move he should have considered a little stronger before he made it. Terry's move about not signing, that stroke of the pen doesn't cost this city one thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's better to move in that direction than away from it. And a lot of t and on some several of these issues, Terry. Yeah, there's I, nothing binding in the Paris right. Compact, so. And and, and on, on some of these other issues like that in the past, before Terry was the mayor, um, I remember I think a resolution on Iraq during the the war on terror. Mm -hmm. I think he voted against it because he said, "Hey, we're here to do local business, and this is international business." But it's a it, and even that was a resolution. It wasn't saying we are sending our young men into harm's way. It, right. It's, but it seems to be a philosophy he's taken. And you can make some arguments for it. You can make some arguments against it, I guess. But Are you surprised he got the act endorsement? No, because I never know what act's going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, that didn't really surprise me too much. Um, and I even think at the beginning of the forum, Victor fumbled a little. But I think he found his footing. Um, and I think Terry was very sharp at, at – you know, in that forum at the beginning. Well, when is he going to start to go up on the air? Because I've oh, man. Did you see that thing? seeing commercials did you every see th 10 did, minutes. Did you see that thing? Yeah. Listen. If you don't know what we're talking about, Victor has just, just put on CNN or put on MSNBC. Man. And you are going to see Bill Bogard and Victor, Victor Gorda. Eric Bailey's asking me if there are any job, job openings. Okay. Well, we I'll let you handle that. Well, we are looking for somebody to park cars, uh, so I guess you can come around and ask about that. But that commercial, mm -hmm. that thing was on at 7 a.m. this morning, and when I first heard it, I went, that's, that's Bill's voice. Yeah. And I turned around, and I saw it, and I went, because of the quality. Well, it's been on all week. But because of the quality, and it looks like film, it's film level, Right. I went, how much money did it cost to get this thing on CNN? Yeah. It doesn't look like the usual charter roll-in, which is what it is, obviously. It is. But then at the end, to close with Bill, yep. I mean, that is brilliant. Yeah. That. Yeah, I haven't seen Tornick <laughs> on the air, so. Well, he better get on the air. Yeah. He better get on the air real fast. Yeah, cause because that, that really surprised me. That's a whole lot of people who saw that. Oh, yeah. Over the past week. That was amazing. And we, we have a story coming out on that. Do you? Real soon. Yeah. Yeah, real soon. Um, but brilliant. I mean, great move. Um, are you guys going to endorse? We are discussing it. And in the past, uh, the outlet has not endorsed. I know. But I do yeah. believe that to be a credible news organization, you need to have opinions and you need to have editorials and you need to make your point mm -hmm. about where the community should go. Mm -hmm. So, yes, if, we, if I have my way, we will endorse. That's not to say we are, but if I have my way, we will. Yeah. And you would do that through an interview process? Uh, Same process as the weekly. Everybody comes in, does one-on-ones, gets mm -hmm. seven to ten questions. No two people are going to get the same questions, obviously. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we go back and we look at that and we, we vote. So what's the future of the weekly? <sighs> well, right now, it's not in a great spot, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, they just lost the deputy editor. Yeah. Uh, I, I did give a recommendation for somebody uh, who was offered the job, and they turned it down. Somebody local that we both know. Mm -hmm. His initials are Justin Chapman. And they need to find someone who knows the city, has the relationships, can cover City Hall and the police, yeah. and is fearless. If they can't get that, then Kevin has to do it. And Kevin, is complete, Kevin York is completely capable of doing it. Do I think they'll fold? No. And I hope they flourish. I don't want people to think, you know, Dre wants to see the weekly die. I don't. I want to see all of the outlets doing well so that when Pasadena now reaches where it's going, mm -hmm. everybody's at their strongest. Yeah. And we can all compete. And you know what? The city will be better off. Absolutely. The readers will be better off. 
I think we're better off, all of us, seeing a competitive mayoral race because Terry's got to go up to another level and Victor's yeah. got to go up to another level. Yeah. We're better off when we have these things. Competition doesn't hurt. I'm with you. So let's hope so. So speaking of competition, we should be talking about the debate, which I guess we're going to do in Studio B. But we're going to talk about the, the post-debate. Do we want to tee it up and... Um, yeah, let's talk. Just let's before we go off the air, let's, go off the uh, air let's, with that. let's tee it up with this little exchange here. Um, I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national no. TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that Any discussion. Time? You called me. You told me. All right, let's not do it I'm now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle, but I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. Okay. I think you called yeah, good. All right. So okay, let's so uh, I think we're going to go to Studio B yep. and talk about all of this because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there was a lot happening. I don't know what Steyer thought he was doing. <laughs> He's kind of hanging around like Introducing a, himself like yeah. a fan. <laughs> yeah, I don't he know. Like a fan I, boy. I know. All, all right. right. Uh, that's it for us until we move to Studio B. So I'm Barry Gordon. And I'm not bald, and I'm Andre Cohen. <laughs> and this is News Wrap. Live at 5, we're moving on.